I follow some of the trad con men on the Twitter because it is interesting watching the back and forth between the trad con men and the trad um, con women because what is going on is fascinating with these men's letting women know how they just cannot stand women unequivocally. But what I did not expect was Tater Tot, one of the leaders of the Red Pill movement, going head to head with Binship. Tater Tot v. Binship. And I'm not using their real names because I don't know if things get flagged over here um, or whatever, but I'm talking about Tater Tot. Y'all should know who this is. Okay, so he has a series of posts going and he wants more, um, he wants more alabaster babies. Um, and there's no, there's no parsing his words. And it's so wild that so many people that are melanated follow this person. <laughs> All right, so this is Tater Tot and his tweets. There's no such thing as too many children. Children are a blessing from God to parents. They create and preserve society in your likeness. You should be asking God to bless you with as many as possible. Anyone who says more kids equals bad is an agent of the devil. It's so interesting that these red pillars speak like this, like kind of like they're demigods or something like that. They never talk about the women, really. Like women are literally just the vessels to be used by these people. That's literally, we're simply the wife appliance or the incubators. Our humanity isn't really important in this equation. And so then this man responds with, the biggest lie was convincing you not to procreate. And then Jim says, and the world is not overpopulated. In fact, we are underpopulated. We need more people, not less. Anyone who feels there are too many people is free to leave. But then pure, pure frock says, or pro frock says, yeah, we need more alabaster people, though, not more Africans and Indians. So under Tater Tot's post, it brings out the alabaster supremacists. It really does. And so that's the reason that I get a little confused why the, the Kangs stay embedded in this movement, considering how, <laughs> how racist some of these people are. But Jim talking about the world is underpopulated. But once again, they're not talking about the labor that women have to go through. Just let's just have more babies. And they're not recognizing that they could talk about having more babies as much as they want to, but the women are shutting down the wombs. They're like, mm -mm, get someone else to do it. So unless Akon comes out with these incubators soon, I, I don't know what these people are going to do because they can talk amongst each other. They can talk amongst the men, but if they don't get the women roped into this conversation and convince the women, I don't know what they what these people going to do. And then this person, the salt of the earth, which I think is like, a South African um, tater tot type of figure. He says, the biggest lie being told today is that the earth is overpopulated when the opposite is actually true because they simply want women to, you know, have these kids. The smug groper says, anyone telling you kids are expensive or need a lot, they're lying. Kids are so easy to feed and amuse. And a man can say this. A man can say that they are easy and, you know, easy to feed because typically these types are not the ones that are expected to actually do the work of being a parent. They make the kid, they, they have that 30 seconds of, <laughs> and then whew, it's just so easy. Now, if women could actually fulfill the role that the dads do, you know, play with them on the weekends, every other weekend or whatever, they, you know, maybe it would be better. Maybe women will get roped in, but the way it currently is, women are saying, uh-uh, the captive, the captive dreamer came in with a little sense. He's like, yeah, but you actually have to raise them. And that's where these men probably start glitching. Um, Kyle says, nobody is saying having multiple children is bad. Multiple women is. The average person doesn't have your money. It's dangerous to tell men to multiply with multiple women and assume they'll be active in the lives of all the children. It just creates more absent fathers. Oh, look at that. A man coming in with some sense. 
Zach Ryder says, hmm, but more kids mean more responsibilities, more time, and more resources needed. It's not about saying more kids equals bad, but rather understanding the responsibilities that come with a larger family. Now let's get to the top potatoes long post to Alabaster Man. He says, dear Alabaster Man, you're screwed. You're being replaced because none of you have children. Even those of you whining about the replacement online like little girls don't find the gumption to F. I see alabaster males bragging about having five kids as if that's an achievement. LOL. Five? LOL, LOL. Per year, right? Oh, all of you alabaster boys lost control of your women and now they won't accept multiple wives anymore. Now they tell you they don't want any more kids. Kids, one's enough. They don't want to do their God-given job anymore. No, they want Instagram likes instead. So your genetic potential is stumped by the whims of some singular female. A female who takes nine whole months to grow a single baby. Other races have multiple ovens for bread. We're not cooked. Some B is screaming at you about loyalty and you're sitting there saying, yes, baby. <laughs> Self-pleasuring to corn when she's asleep or maybe um, cheating with a side B condom on. Oh no, I couldn't get another woman pregnant. My wife would unalive me. Total effing losers. Soon your race will be nothing more than a few pages in a history book. A lesson on what happens when you F the female psyche so hard they're obsessed with money and social media as opposed to being one of many baby factories for a king. 30 children minimum for the Dons. Now, they are letting you know. I've already said this, that they think of you as an incubator, a wife appliance, a bang maid. That is simply all. They do not regard you as humans. And so that's the reason why I find it so interesting that women are in the red pill movement at all. Why they even follow these people, because they don't see women as even being human. They see women as being an incubator and bang maid. That's it. He says, alabaster people. Go talk to your best friend wife about what to do this weekend. Maybe you could take a nice walk around Ikea, enjoy extinction. So he he really finds it like disgraceful that a man could actually be friends with his wife. Social media and these red pillars are going to keep so many men, younger men, single. These people are going to keep young men single because they take this attitude, the young men that are listening to this, they take this attitude and they go into the real world. And these people talk about women like these red pillars on social media talk about women. And women don't have to accept this. Like this is not acceptable if you are a woman that has like her own money and control of her body. You don't have to accept people like this. I'm only highlighting this so you can see, you can see it when it comes. When when these minions, uh, when these baby tater tots come and start talking to you like this, where they disrespect your humanity, you can know where they're getting this from and recognize that they do not see you as a fully autonomous human being. Benship has entered the chat. He says, anyone who tells you to ignore marriage in favor of impregnating lots of women and abandoning, abandoning your children is a grifter, the kind of grifter who also sells you meaningless platitudes for $49.99 a month, guaranteeing you big money income for little or no work. And then he starts to come for the head tater tot, the top potato. Now, Benship has his own issues. He he wants people to get married. He doesn't want women to have a way out. But at least he's talking about marriage. But I wouldn't I, I wouldn't fall for this type of rhetoric either. These trad con men are also dangerous because they don't want women to have autonomy either. They just want women to be locked into marriage. Um, tater tot, the top potato, just wants women to be anchored with a bunch of kids. So they're both problematic in their own ways. So we got Ben Ship coming for um, the top potato. And it's very interesting to watch this stuff. And I stay 
um, watching the trad cons come at people. And thank you um, to my subscriber for sending me this back and forth. Um, here is a clip of this video. I am using this for education purposes. It should be fair use. Like, comment. Absolutely irrefutable is not true. They know better. They know better because they've seen through the matrix. They've seen through that truth. That truth is actually a mask for the underlying reality. Now, it may be that there are some widely held notions that are untrue, but in order to debunk those notions, you would actually have to show why your notions are better. However, if you are the kind of person who suggests, for example, that hard work is useless, I have a better way, a better way, that better way is gonna earn you fast money without a lot of work, without getting yourself educated, without putting in the hours, without developing a skill set. that person is conning you, they are lying to you. If somebody were to tell you, for example, that there is an easy, easy way for you to get absolutely fit with no exercise and eating trash, that person would be lying to you. That person would be conning you because obviously you need to eat healthy and do exercise if you want to be in shape. And the biggest one of all, and has been held true, by pretty much every griftery movement of the last couple of centuries is the idea that you should not get married, that marriage is bad for you, that somehow marriage is going to ruin your life. Now, there are a lot of problems with the current legal structure of marriage. I agree with that critique of the current legal structure of marriage. No fault divorce is one of the worst things that ever happened to Western civilization. Marriage is a commitment. That commitment is lifelong. There should actually have to be a really, really, really good reason why you are divorcing. And that's particularly true if you have children, because of course, if marriage is designed as the fundamental building block of institutional society. It is the place where children are reared. It is the place where you produce children in the first place and children require stability. It is from those fundamental building blocks of civilization. The little platoons, as Edmund Burke called them, that you can actually build a functional free civilization, which is why every griftery movement of the last couple of centuries has assaulted the family from the outside. So, for example, Karl Marx, very big on assaulting the family. The Communist Manifesto famously suggests abolition of the family. Why? Because the family is a place where you might learn bourgeois values. It's a place where you might be inculcated into things like responsibility, duty, church. These are all very bad things, according to the Marxist movement which is why the Communist Manifesto says, on what foundation is the present family, the bourgeois family based? On capital, on private gain. In its completely developed form, this family exists only among the bourgeois. But this state of things finds its complement in the practical absence of the family among the proletarians and in public prostitution. And so blowing up the family would allow for a better world. Don't get married, fight the fight. Blow up the traditional institutions that actually support a functional society and fight the fight. This is also why today the New York Times has an entire article titled Lessons from the 20-Person Polycule. Because the New York Times 